angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Amen. Good morning. You may be seated for just a moment. Just uh, want to share with you uh, from Matthew chapter 2 this morning. And in, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, it gives an account for us of the, of the wise men coming from the east uh, to come and see Jesus. And in Matthew 2 and verses 10 and 11, it says this. It says, And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come in to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So again, God bless the reading of his word this morning. Again, we do want to take this time just to welcome you here to Myrtle Grove Baptist Church. So glad that you've decided uh, to join us this morning again and during this, this time of the year, this special time of year. And look forward uh, to what God will Share, show us this morning and, and what we'll hear and, uh, from his word and also in music today. Again, if you're a guest today, we're especially glad that you're here with us also this morning. Just a, a few reminders this morning for us as before we continue uh, today, just uh, again, um, a couple of things that are coming up. A lot of these things are in your bulletin, but we also want to highlight a few things as well. Again, next Sunday... Uh, after church, we'll be having a reception for Miss Mary Ann Winstead, and Mary Ann is going to be retiring from uh, director of our family uh, preschool learning center. And uh, yes, and 
after, after she's been there, I believe, since the very beginning, back in the year 2000. Not always as director, but she's served our, our church and our community and, and the children of our community for 23 years there. So we want to honor her next Sunday with the reception after church. You'll have the opportunity to bring a card or, or a gift for her as well and just show your appreciation for her next Sunday. And hope you'll, uh, hope you'll be here for that. Also, next Sunday afternoon at about 445, we'll be gathering at the Family Life Center as well. And a church family will be going out. And we'll be doing some caroling in our, in our area for our, our homebound members. And then on our way back, we'll have a time of fellowship with that. And hopefully share some, uh, some soup and some chili uh, and, and some fixings and that together as a church family for those who are out caroling. And again, if you would uh, like to sign up to provide... Uh, some soup or chili to share with somebody else and share with the crowd, then uh, there's a, a list out in the foyer and you can sign up for that uh, in the foyer. Also as well, again, we just want to remind you, of course, in two weeks it's Christmas Eve and we'll be having our, our, our combined service, our one service on Christmas Eve morning at 1030. Again, I hope you'll make a point to be here with us uh, during those times uh, in the weeks ahead. So uh, now also, as you recall from last week, we, we uh, mentioned that this is the week of prayer. For, it has been the week of prayer for Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And um, again, and we try to start our in-gathering for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering uh, on this Sunday. Of course, we'll be receiving that offering for the next several weeks. But again, we just want to, uh, customarily, we have something here at Morgan Grove Baptist Church for that first Sunday of uh, receiving that offering called the March to the Manger. And you see our, our manger uh, our, right here at the front. So just... Uh, uh, if you are prepared uh, to present that offering and give that offering this morning uh, to, for Lottie Moon Christmas offering, I just invite you to come and to, and to place that offering here uh, in the manger at, at right now and, and do that uh, and we'll, uh, as we listen to a little bit of music for that. So if you would, uh, come and present that. We're going to take a, a moment just to pray over this offering this morning, and then, then we'll continue to, to worship in song today. So if you pray with me, please. Father God, again, we're grateful for those uh, who have come this morning to give, Father. We're just thankful, Lord, for the missionaries who, who serve and who uh, and spread your word and uh, uh, to others around the world, Father. We're just thankful, Lord, that we as, as Southern Baptists can combine our resources with with other churches, God, and that we can uh, that the, this what we give here can be multiplied uh, thousands and thousands of times uh, to make an impact across the world, Father. And again, God, we're just uh, are blessed to be a part of that, God. Now, just uh, be with us now as we continue to worship, and we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. would stand and worship with us.
정답이 맹이라 This a Christ who was not foretold Who in the shadows of death and Promise of dawn now arise behold
Jesus, Emmanuel, oh come let us adore you, Jesus, Emmanuel, oh come let us adore you. That's why we're here this morning. We're here to adore Him and worship Him. We're so thankful for the choir and all the work that they've put in, Cody and the praise team, everything that they've done to prepare for this morning. And uh, it's evident that they've worked very hard. We're thankful for that. And as they lead us this morning, I hope that you will join your hearts in with them. They're our worship leaders. They're not up here worshiping so that you can observe their worship. They're up here worshiping so that the Lord will receive the praise and the glory and that you can join your heart with them. That's why they're here. And that's hopefully what you're engaged in doing this morning. I did a little switcheroo on us this morning and we're going to actually light the peace candle this morning. And uh, we'll get to the joy candle next week. But the Treywicks are coming this morning. She's got a big smile on her face because she had the scripture for joy memorized. And so then I just swapped it around. You know, you never know with me. I'm going to keep you on your toes, right? All right. So, um, so thank you, Trey Wicks, for uh, leading us this morning. And Miss Tammy, if you'll read the scripture from Isaiah. Thank right. you. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the joy that's in our hearts. And Lord, we know that that could not be possible if you had not sent your one and only son to make peace by the blood of his cross. We're thankful, dear Lord, for the manger. We're thankful for the cross. And we're thankful for the empty tomb. We're thankful that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and you are seated on the throne even now. Lord, I pray that you would be enthroned in every heart that's in this place and those that are listening. And Father, that you would be lifted up and magnified through the remainder of this service. Lord, as we look forward to Christmas, we pray, Lord, that you would reign supremely in our hearts more than any other thing, Lord. You would have your will and your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you. We ask that you sing this with us. You don't have to stand if you don't want to, but if you'd like to stand, go ahead. To come on me
This is a song that we introduced a couple weeks ago. I hope you remember it and just sing it with us. A starry night, a newborn king, hark the herald angels singing. So this morning, I was going to read from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, um, but like Josh said, we did a little switcheroo, so that's already been read. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about it for a second. Uh, so this next song is um, based on that passage of Scripture. Uh, the song's name is His Name is Wonderful, um, and I think the part that we need to focus on in that verse is verse 7, where it says that he shall reign on David's throne. 
and he will, he will uh, reign with justice and righteousness, right? That's the same Jesus that is coming in a manger that we're singing about this morning is going to come back and he's going to reign on David's throne with justice and righteousness. And a savior and a Lord like that is one who's, who's worth our worship and worth our praise and worth our lives. So I want you to have that, those two verses in mind as we sing this song this morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. We do serve a mighty Savior. He's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Join me in prayer. Father, Lord, we just thank you for a beautiful Sunday morning, Lord, that we can come and worship you through song and through the word. Lord, I just thank you for all your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we do serve a mighty King. In a few days, we'll be celebrating the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I just come to you this time and just lift you up high, Lord, through these songs. Lord, bless us tithes and offerings so they'll serve you in a mighty way. Lord, I just love you. Give us what we fail you in Christ, and I pray. Amen. What hope we hold this 
We're so thankful for our choir and our praise team leading us this morning. Give them another hand, if you don't mind, for the great job that they've done this morning. Appreciate that. I want you to open your Bible with me to Isaiah 9. We've read that already this morning, but we're going gonna, gonna to give you just a moment to do this, Miss Sue. Uh, we're going to read from beginning in verse 1, uh, so if you would do that. So open up your Bible, Isaiah 9. And we'll look at verses 1 through 7 this morning. And as I, every year as I prepare uh, to preach about Christmas and, and all of that, it all, it, all be, it all begins feeling just a little dry, a little rote, like we've done this before, right? So it's kind of like we do this every year, right? But, but then at some point in the process, the Lord just grips my heart. And it becomes real all over again. And the Lord says, yes, I did this. And it's amazing. And it, and it almost seems strange to me whenever I think about what God did. Does it ever seem strange to you? It seems kind of like, this is weird. Why would God do this this way? I mean, couldn't he have done it a million other ways? Well, the Lord chose to send His one and only son to be born as a baby laid in a manger. I I think of that. And I think, 
what kind of contradiction is that? I mean, the rock of ages in an earthen manger. The king of kings and the Lord of lords as a baby. That's strange to me. And, and what I believe you see here in Isaiah is you see the, the paradox of all of it. A paradox is a, an apparent contradiction. And as we look at it, we, we think, what in the world? God said that he would do it this way. And many people didn't believe it. Many people didn't understand it. No one understood it. Many people didn't believe it. And yet God had said this is exactly what he would do. And he said it long ago. Long ago when the world was still in darkness. If you have your Bible open there to Isaiah 9. Hopefully we've given Miss Sue enough time to find uh, verse 1 there. Go ahead and stand with me and let's read. Beginning in verse 9, we'll read verses, uh, verse 1 of chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Isaiah the prophet foretold, and he said, But there will be no gloom for her who is in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in that latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness. With, uh, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Pray with me. Father God, we are thankful. We're thankful to be in your presence this morning. We're thankful for the wonderful songs that inspire us to worship you and to lift our hearts toward you. Thankful for all that you've done. Lord, I thank you that you said long ago that you would send your one and only son. And Lord, this day we stand and we look to the manger and we think about what you have accomplished. We're in awe and we have wonder and we have joy. And I pray, Lord, that each and every heart, Lord, now as we uh, listen and hear your word. We pray, God, that you would give us wisdom and insight, that you would give us peace in our hearts, knowing that Jesus has made a way for us to be found righteous in you, to be brought near to you. And Lord, we pray that that, that message of hope would resonate in our hearts throughout the rest of this Christmas season. And others, Lord, they would be drawn to you as a result. And we pray this in Jesus, holy and wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to, as you think about Jesus as your Prince of Peace this morning, I want you to hear this truth. Jesus offers true peace in a chaotic world. Jesus came as a great contradiction to the world around him that he entered into. He came in as a baby. He came in as light in darkness. When I think about that first contradiction, the light entering the darkness, the world is a very dark place. The world's broken around us, right? Amen. Amen. Y'all see that? You look on the news. All you have to do is turn on your television for five minutes and, you, and, and eventually you'll realize the world is broken. There's something wrong with the world. Do you sense that? Do you know that? Well, the problem with the world is the world was from the moment that Adam and Eve took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil 
evil entered into the world and the world fell into darkness. Darkness is ever present in our world. But here's the thing about darkness. Darkness is a non-imposable force. You can't go into a room and turn on the darkness. When Allison was working the night shift, she had to close those those curtains to block out all the light and close the doors and and, you know, try to make it dark enough for her to get the rest that she needed so she could get up and go to work at night. You can't turn on darkness. You can't flip on a, a and rather than a flashlight, a dark light. You can't do that. You, you, you can't make darkness. Evil never overcomes good, but good always triumphs over evil. As Jesus was coming down that, that night, and he entered the world. The, the Bible said that a great light shone around the shepherds. And that they were sore afraid. They were terrified because of the light. And John talks about the light. And he said men would hide their faces from the light. Because they loved the darkness instead. But Jesus said this. In John 8. Verse 12, he said again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So if you have Jesus, guess what you have inside of you? You have light inside of you. And as a result, you have life and not just abundant life on the earth, but you have eternal life that's already dwelling inside of you. He is the light. Of the world. Have you come to him this morning? The Bible says that the closer that we get with Jesus and the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will radiate his light out of us. It will emanate from us. We will glow. I I love to use these little stars sometimes as an illustration for the children this time of the year. Have you ever seen these? You ever pick these up at like Dollar Tree or somewhere? You think about these lights, you can stick them on the ceiling in, your, in the kids' bedrooms and they'll glow at night. But the thing about them is, in order for them to glow, what has to have happened? They have to be near the light. They have to have been in, in, exposed to the light. And the longer that they're exposed to the light, the longer they will glow in the darkness. And the brighter they will glow in the darkness. And it's the same way with Christians. But here's the thing about these stars. What happens? After a little while... The light goes out if they're not kept near the light. So for you and I, in a dark world, we have to stay close to Jesus. He is the light. You got to be spending time with him. So this Christmas, do you shine for Jesus? Well, here's the question. If you're not shining for Jesus and you're not bearing his light, get closer to him. Spend time with him. That's, it's a simple formula. We try to make it so complicated. And we feel like we've got to do this thing over here. Or this great deed over here. In order to be closer to Jesus. He just wants time. He wants your devotion. Your time. He wants you to wake up in the morning and say. Lord thank you for another day. I, here I am. What do you want to do with me today? Get into his word and hear what he has to say for you. Spend time with him in prayer every single day. That's all he really wants. He doesn't want some great feat. If he wants to do that, he chooses to do that through you, he will. He's the king. He just wants you to come and sit at his feet. Amen. You can do that. Shine for him. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Who is the light? Well, he is Jesus. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He's there. He's available every single day. Matthew 5, 16 says in the same way, Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. Give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And then Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Man, are you shining for him? But secondly, the, not only has light entered the darkness, he liberates us with love. He liberated us by his love. When you think about what Jesus did, and you hear Isaiah's prophecy, it talks about breaking the yoke of our burdens. And the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. You remember Midian? You remember who fought the battle of Midian? 
Gideon fought the battle of Midian. That's how you can remember that, okay? You got it now? Gideon fought the battle of Midian. And guess what he did? He used, God used 300 men, and they didn't raise a single sword. What did they raise? Well, they raised trumpets, and they had jars with light inside of them, <laughs> which is amazing. That, that's, that's a wonderful picture of who Jesus is and what he does for us. He puts his light inside of us, and we're able to overcome. We don't overcome with swords. Christians are supposed to be the people of peace because they serve the prince of peace. And he liberated us. A baby in a manger liberated us, not by going to war and military conquest. What did Jesus do? He lived a humble life. He started out humble, and he lived the rest of his life humble. He was the most peaceful person that ever walked the face of the planet. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. And he lived a sinless life, and then he died on a sinner's cross for you and me. And he liberated us by his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And you think, well, you're going to handle this thing on your own. You're going to take care of it. You're going to defeat sin. And I'm going to tell you something. Without Jesus, sin will defeat you. You need the baby in the manger more than you know. And if it weren't for the manger, if it wasn't for Christmas, there would be no Easter. You think about that. And if there were no Easter, you would still be dead in your trespasses and sins. But He liberated us. From the bondage of death. And you and I now, we're alive in Christ. We have been set free from the bondage of sin. And we were just like slaves. Christmas is a time when we celebrate that our liberator has come. And that he has broken the bonds of sin and death. He liberated us by his love. But thirdly, a cross overshadowed his cradle. I think about that, and I, I think, man, he is the, the one baby that was born to die. And I, Isaiah's prophecy seems absurd. If you listen again to these words, he says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. Now, that's the picture that you all see. Mary and Joseph in, in that hollowed-out cave in the rock. A stable with hay on the ground and animals around. Jesus at the center in the manger. That's the picture that you see at Christmas time. And that's the picture that Isaiah is giving us. But then the very next line makes you go, what? He says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government shall be upon his shoulder. C.S. Lewis wrote it this way. In uh, the series, uh, uh, The Chronicles of Narnia, he said, Once in our world, a stable had something in it that was bigger than our whole world. I love that. I mean, that Brian Nall sent us that, uh, uh, that quote this morning. Ephesians 2.14 says, For he himself is our peace. He who made us both one has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Look at what he did. He took it upon himself. Colossians says one, uh, Colossians one says, uh, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. I mean, what you see from scripture, what you see from Isaiah here is the baby with the weight of the world on his shoulders. That's an amazing thought to me. To think about a king in a manger. What, this is what Tertullian said. He said, what king is there who bears the ensign of his dominion upon his shoulder? And not rather upon his head as a diadem. Or in his hand as a, as a scepter. Or else as a mark in some royal apparel. But the one new king of the new ages, Jesus Christ, carried on his shoulder both the power and the excellence of his new glory. Even 
his cross so that according to our former prophecy, speaking of Isaiah 9, he might thenceforth reign from the tree as Lord. The weight of the world on his shoulder as Jesus carried the cross up the hill to Golgotha. The cross overshadowed his cradle. But I want to tell you lastly that it's probably the most absurd of all, the greatest contradiction of all, is that majesty was laid in a manger. Majesty in a manger. Look again at the words that Isaiah says. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I mean, you imagine a royal birth for just a moment. And the pomp and the circumstance and the celebration and the fanfare and all of the celebration that would have happened the moment that the new king would have been born, the heir to the throne. And here is Jesus, the king of kings, the king of glory, who's coming down to a manger and animals greet him. When I watch what the chosen, how they depicted the story And I see Joseph in that depiction trying to find a place for his wife to give birth. And and he comes into the stable and he has to go find a shovel to remove the animal dung that's on the floor. So that there can be a clear bare spot for them to sit. Majesty. Humbled and in a manger. And yet Isaiah says that his government will increase. In other words, he'll be the greatest king that ever walked the face of the planet. And his kingdom will never end. Jesus said before he ascended, as he was establishing his kingdom, he said all authority In heaven and on earth has been given to me all authority. And then to uphold it, this this king, he's the only one that can establish a kingdom that is universal. And then uphold it. How many kings have lost their kingdoms? Over the the generations, they've, they've built their kingdoms up and then what happened? They died or someone else conquered them. And they lost their kingdoms. But what does the scripture say? Jesus will never ever lose his kingdom. And then it says the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. 600 years before Jesus was born. These prophets closed their books of prophecy. And then things happen, shifts, governance changed and everything. But then out of the silence, a baby was born. And what the Lord had said would happen came true. Majesty entered a manger. What a contradiction. But if all of this is true and all of it is is real and Jesus really is who he says he is and he's alive today, then that means that he is the Lord of all. That means that that what what Isaiah said, Jesus fulfilled and folks, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And that also means that what he said will come to pass. He will come again one day and you will see him coming on the clouds. Are you ready for that day to happen? Listen, you're not ready for that day if you've never bowed your knee and you've never confessed that Jesus is Lord. If you've never come to this one who was once a baby in a manger who is now the risen and ascended king and you've never surrendered your heart and your life to him. 
Do you believe that Jesus is Lord of all? I've got a, a little acrostic for the word Lord for you to think about. Is He Lord of your life? Is He Lord of all? Lord of your lips? I mean, what do I say about Him? Does He have control over what I say? Have I made the good confession that Jesus is Lord? If I have, if I have professed Him and do I live that way? Is He Lord of your occupation? The things that I have to do. <laughs> is He Lord of the recreation time of your life? The things that I want to do. And is He Lord of your domain? The places where I do it. Places where I do the things I do. Is He Lord? Lord of all. I remember what Joshua said. My grandmother had it on the wall. She said, Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. Were the gods of Egypt or the gods of the land of the Canaanites? He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What about you? Is that true for you today? Is that true as you look ahead to the Christmas season? Will you and your house serve material things? Will you and your house serve food and presents and Christmas trees and decorations? Or will you and your house serve the Lord? I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Where do you stand this morning? Have you surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? If you've never asked Him to be the Lord of your life, I want to give you the opportunity to do that. For you to surrender to Him. And it begins by saying, I need you, Lord, because I am a sinner. If you've never admitted that to the Lord, this is your opportunity to say, Lord, I am a sinner. And then to ask for His forgiveness. And so just pray this prayer in your heart as I lead you. Say, dear Jesus, I admit to you that I am a sinner. I've done things that I know are wrong and I've failed to do the things that I know are right. But Jesus, I believe that you were born in a humble stable, placed in a manger. And Jesus, you lived that sinless life that I could never live. And I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. Jesus, I know that there's no other way for my sins to be forgiven. So I ask you now to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Be my Savior. And be the Lord of my life. I give you my all. I'll spend the rest of my life loving you and serving you. Thank you for saving me, a sinner. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? This is our invitation that if you've just asked Jesus into your heart, there privately in your pew for you to come and make that public. Let him be the Lord of your lips this morning as you profess your faith in Jesus. And don't be ashamed of it. He wasn't ashamed of you. He died for you. You come. And you let us know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you want to join this church, you know that the Lord has been leading you here. This is your opportunity and this is your invitation to come and, and say, I want to serve along the saints right here at Myrtle Grove Baptist Church. And we'll welcome you and we'll love you. And I wonder if you just need prayer. If you do this morning, you come. Our altar counselors will be here to pray with you. Or you can pray right there at your pew. You can ask a brother or sister to pray with you. And just pray. And spend time with the Lord. You use this invitation the way the Lord would see fit. Let's sing together. So come let us adore Him. Oh.
just a few moments. An exciting day to be in the house of the Lord and just give Him praise and glory for all that He's done. Uh, not just because it's Christmas time, we're leading up to Christmas, but also because God is moving in the hearts of people even today, right now, bringing people. And uh, so I'm going to get uh, James and Miss Jesse to come on up here, Brother James, for a minute with me, sir. And uh, they came uh, sharing their desire this morning with us that they would uh, come and join it and be a part of Myrtle Grove Baptist Church in full membership and faith as we serve the Lord together. And they, and they are already serving the Lord here in Myrtle Grove. Uh, they've been serving for a long time already uh, as they came with, with Vita Church. And uh, they, they want to be here and be a part of this, not neglecting them over there. They're going to still be serving with them and visiting with them at Vita, but they want to be members here and serve along the saints here. And so if you're thankful that they've come this morning and you celebrate along with us, would you say amen? Amen. 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 I'm so thankful for you. All right. we'll, <clears throat> we'll ask you to hang back. If you don't know them already, then this, is, this would be a great opportunity for you to come and introduce yourself to Mr. James and Miss Jesse, and uh, just get to know them and, and welcome them into the family, and so make them feel a part of it. So thank you, my brother. God bless you. All right, and we'll be praying for you guys. If you'll sit, just have your seat there, and uh, stay back toward the the front. Stay toward the front. Um, anything else I need to mention? Are, we, are you ready to go? You're good to go. All right, let's go. We have one more song to do for y'all.
everything I feel within Redeeming what was lost and all that could have been All this is a healing kind of love You are the truest friend Staying through the night when I was at my end Comforting my heart till it was light again Oh, this is a faithful kind of love Everlasting Father Emmanuel, God with us, you're here with me. Wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders. You are the final word. You alone decide when every page will turn so I will trust your timing I will rest secure oh this is a steady kind of love yes it is Ever everlasting father prince of peace Emmanuel God with us you're here with me, wonderful counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders. Let's see that course with us again. Everlasting Father, Prince of 
God, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for this day where we can come together and worship your name. Father, we thank you that you are everlasting, that you are our Father, that you are the Prince of Peace, and Lord, that you are with us. No matter what's going on around us, Lord, we know that you are here with us. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you. Lord, we thank you for the voices to worship you. Lord, we, we thank you for this life that we should be living for you. God, I pray that you would use us throughout the rest of this week, that we would further your kingdom, and that you would bring us back here ready to worship you next week. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.